Chapter 6, A Favor from Jeremy In her worry about moving day, in watching the tractor, the cat, and finally the rats, Mrs. Frisbee had forgotten that she had set out originally to get some corn for supper. Now she remembered it. So instead of continuing to her house, she turned toward the far corner of the garden and the stump at the edge of the woods beyond. She was a little tired after her dash from the cat, so she walked along slowly, feeling the warmth of the sun and the smell of the breeze. The mi this mild breeze, carrying the moist essence of early spring, caused a deaf leaf to flutter here and there, or a dead leaf to flutter here and there, and across the garden, near the fence, it moved something that sparkled in the sunlight. <clears throat> This caught the corner of Mrs. Frisbee's eye. She glanced at it, saw that it was only a bit of tin foil or aluminum foil blown from somewhere, and she looked away again. Then she looked back, and for a moment a black object plummeted from the sky, and she recognized her friend, Jeremy the Crow. A thought crossed Mrs. Frisbee's mind. She changed direction again, and moving more quickly, ran across the earth to where Jeremy stood. He was hopping around the shiny piece of foil, eyeing it from one direction and another. What had occurred to Mrs. Frisbee was that although Jeremy was not the biggest of animals she had met, and though he was young, he knew things and places she did not, and one had to be begin somewhere. As she approached him, he had picked up the foil in his beak and was spreading his wings to fly off. Wait, please, she called. She turned, folded his wings, sorry, he turned, folded his wings, and then replaced the foil carefully on the ground. Hello, he said. You remember me. Of course, you saved me from the cat. Then he added, what do you think of this piece of foil? Mrs. Frisbee looked at it without much interest. It's just a piece of foil, she said. It's not very big. True, but it's shiny, especially when the sun strikes it just so. Why are you interested in shiny things? Well, really, I'm not. At least, not very. But I have a friend who likes them. So when I see one, I pick it up. I see. That's very thoughtful. But would the friend be female? As a matter of fact, yes, she is. How do you know? Just a guess, said Mrs. Frisbee. Do you remember saying once that I needed help? I might ask you. I do. Any time. Just ask for Jeremy. Any of the crows can find me. And now, if you will excuse me, he bent over to pick up the foil again. Please don't go yet, said Mrs. Frisbee. I think perhaps you can help me now. Ah, said Jeremy. What kind of help? Are you hungry? I'll bring you some seeds from the barn loft. I know where they're stored. No, thank you, said Mrs. Frisbee. We have enough to eat. And then she told him as briefly as she could about Timothy, his sickness, and the problem of moving day. Jeremy knew about moving day. Crows do not have to move, but they keep a close watch on such activities as plowing and planting so as to get their fair share of what's planted. And with their sharp eyes, they see the, animal, the small animals leaving before the plow. So he clucked sympathetically when he heard Mrs. Frisbee's story, cocked his head to one side, and thought as hard as he could, for as long as he could, which was about thirty seconds. His eyes closed with the effort. I don't know what you should do, he said finally. I'm sorry, but maybe I can help even so. At least I can tell you what we do when we don't know what to do. We... The crows, most of the birds. What do you do then? Over that way, Jeremy nodded in the direction of the deep woods and faraway mountains that rose beyond the fence. About a mile from here, there grows a very large beech tree, the biggest tree in the whole forest. Near the top of the tree, there is a hollow in the trunk. In the hollow lives an owl, who is the wisest, uh, the oldest animal in the woods, some say in the world. When we don't know what to do, we ask him. Sometimes he answers our questions. Sometimes he doesn't. It depends on how he feels. As my father used to say, 
what kind of, hu uh, of a humor he's in. Or possibly, thought Mrs. Frisbee, on whether or not he knows the answer. But she said, could you ask him then if he knows of any help for me? She did not think it likely that he would. Ah, no, Jeremy said, that won't do. That is, I could ask him, but I don't think the owl would listen. Imagine, a crow come to ask for help for a lady mouse with a sick child. He wouldn't believe me. Then what's to be done? What's to be done? You must go yourself and ask him. But I could never find the tree. And if I did, I don't think I could climb so high. Ah, now that's where I can help. As I said, I would. I will carry you there on my back, the way I did before, and home again, of course. Mrs. Frisbee hesitated. It was one thing to leap on a crow's back when the cat was only three jumps away and coming fast, but quite another to do it deliberately and to fly deep into the forest in an unknown, but deep into a dark and unknown forest. In short, Mrs. Frisbee was afraid. Then she thought of Timothy and the big steel plow blade. She told herself, I have no choice. If there is any chance that the owl might be able to help me, to advise me, I must go, she said to Jeremy. Thank you very much. I will go and talk to the owl if you will take me. It's a great favor. It's nothing, said Jeremy. You're welcome. But we can't go now. Why not? In the daytime, when the sun is out, the owl goes deep into the hollow and sleeps. That is, they say he sleeps, but I don't believe it. How could anyone sleep so long? I think he sits in there, part of the time at least, and thinks. And that's why he knows so much. But anyway, he won't speak, to, speak in the daytime. Not to anyone. But at night, he's out flying, flying and hunting. I know, said Mrs. Frisbee, and that was another reason to be afraid. The time to see him is just at dusk. Then when the light goes dim, he comes to the entrance of the hollow and watches while the dark comes in. That's the time to ask him questions. I understand, said Mrs. Frisbee. Shall I go this evening? At five o'clock, Jeremy said. I'll be at your house. He'll, he picked up the piece of foil in his bill, waved goodbye, and flew off.